morning and welcome to the Jobs for Nationals fifth virtual amortization career fair. Um, Salam alaikum to everybody who is joining us, uh, who is uh, part of this event. Um, and you know, we've got an exciting um, about 30 minutes um, talking to two of the in industry leaders in, in a very different market segment. So we've got um, one of the companies that is largest restaurant operator in the MENA region and Kazakhstan in terms of number of restaurants. Um, and the second organization that is joining us for the panel discussion is a premier, a fully integrated provider of engineering and construction solutions to the energy industry. So I'd like to welcome um, Thomas Burnett and Peter Meredith from Americana Restaurants. Hi, Dinesh. Yes. Hi, Hey, nice to yeah. be here. Thanks. Uh, apologies that your camera isn't operational, but we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, and I, I'd also like to welcome um, Joanne Guthrie from McDermott. Hey, Dinesh. Thanks very much. Really Thank excited to be part that. of this discussion today. Great. Thank you for joining us. So um, this is an informal discussion. It is to talk about the company strategies, company growth, and uh, talk about amortization strategies mainly on how your companies are um, working on amortization and supporting UA national talent. So, you know, starting on, um, I suppose, an alphabetical order, I will start with Americana. Uh, so Thomas uh, and Peter, could you please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit more about Americana restaurants? <laughs> You yeah, highlighted already. Uh, American Restaurant is the, the biggest food operator here in the Middle East. I think we are uh, well known for our iconic brands. Uh, I think uh, everybody enjoys uh, KFC, Pizza Hut, uh, Hardee's, uh, at, you know, at lunch or dinner, and I think once in a while uh, some nice Krispy Kreme donuts. I think this is this is us. This is what is behind Americana, and uh, yeah, we, we have our headquarters here in the UAE, and uh, we uh, I, I think there is lots of uh, uh, beautiful job uh, and growth opportunities in the UAE from that. Uh, obviously, we have uh, around 2,300 restaurants, uh, a big amount here in the UAE, but uh, the rest is uh, split uh, across uh, the GCC region, and as you said, uh, uh, as well as uh, Morocco and also Kazakhstan. So, um, very happy to be here. Thanks for the thanks for the invitation. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm here with Peter. I'm the head of HR, and Peter is the head of our learning development. Uh, um, area and so uh, happy to share more on uh, on amortization and what we do more. Okay, great. Thanks for that introduction. So not too long ago, you know, just last year, um, Americana Restaurants went public, uh, and I read that it raised about 1.8 billion dollars uh, with Mohammed Al Abbar as one of the investors. So could you tell us how that has had an impact on business? Look, um, I think Americana Restaurants uh, we, we have it clearly on our website uh, stated, uh, our, our strategy is to grow the, the iconic brands in the region uh, and uh, uh, the, that money that we raise indeed will be uh, further used for um, uh, realizing that growth. So for us, there's a, a growth aspiration that is very strong and I think that growth aspiration also allows to give people in the company a lot of growth opportunities to develop, develop themselves. Okay. And, and what is the current total headcount of the UAE business? In, in the UAE, we have um, uh, slightly above 10,000 um, uh, people, staff. Uh, a good amount obviously is in the restaurant on a daily basis serving our customers. But uh, as well, we have our headquarters. Our headquarters is in Sharjah. Uh, and uh, there we have, uh, I would say, approximately 500, 600 people uh, and, and roles um, uh, related to that. Okay. And um, if you want to talk about the amortization strategy, then um, what is the organization's overall strategy for amortization in 2023? Good. Yes, uh, good question. I think look, uh, I think everybody is is, uh, is, is struggling with uh, that, that question. I think the way we have tried to internally answer it is we obviously uh, want to align it very much with our uh, strategy for the rest of uh, the people and keep it very balanced. So we focus obviously on attracting, retaining and developing the local talent. That is our first and foremost uh, focus. Uh, I believe we offer competitive benefits, we target training programs, uh, we uh, provide opportunities, as I said earlier, for growing and advancing 
uh, individuals within the really big organization that we have. So uh, thereby we have started to uh, partner with colleges, universities to, to really be part, the early part of an individual's career development. And, you know, uh, there, there's a huge push, um, you know, to be inclusive nowadays. Um, and everybody is talking about inclusivity. Um, so what have efforts have you guys made, has American Restaurant made um, to create a more inclusive um, work environment for Emirati employees? Yeah, it's another good question, Dinesh. So we've, we've made a conscious effort to uh, put in place training programs that really focus on diversity and inclusion for all of our managers here within Americana, including things like you know reverse mentorship, where we can actually spend time listening to those Emiratis that join us around how they can help shape our business going forwards. And in HR specifically, we've established employee resource groups that help and support our Emirati workforce. And they're an immediate help in case of any misunderstandings and they're to support them throughout their career journey. And overall, we foster kind of open communication channels. That's very much our culture here within Americana restaurants. And it includes regular group meetings with a direct sort of line into the CEO so that he himself can listen to their feedback going forwards as well. So lots of different channels. Oh, that, that sounds great. Um, and, you know, um, when we're talking about talent acquisition, then talent development also plays a big part um, of the acquisition and retention strategy. So um, have, has your organization taken steps to develop um, skills for Emirati employees? And what steps ha has it taken for that? Yeah, it's a continual journey, Dinesh. Again, a very good question and part of our culture here within Americana restaurants. And it is specifically what young uh, people joining our business are crying out for is that coaching culture. So that daily routine where we provide coaching feedback in the moment to help them develop, develop and grow. And we're currently exploring how to best offer targeted training programs that are specific to their development needs. And we tap into and use all mechanisms from an L&D perspective in terms of forums, uh, YouTube, Coursera. We've got a, a vast platform of learning solutions available to support young Emiratis that are joining our business. And our goal is to offer mentorship opportunities, professional development that clearly help our Emiratis to advance their careers and contribute as well to Americana restaurants. And that's not specifically just for Emiratis, that's for anybody joining Americana restaurants. Okay, that's brilliant. So I'll come to my last question uh, before, um, you know, we ask Joanna Guthrie uh, to basically tell us more about uh, McDermott. Um, so what challenges um, has your organization encountered in implementing uh, the amortization strategies and how have you addressed them so far? Um, look, I, I think the next three, three things come to mind and I think uh, this is good to, to raise here. I think the first one and the biggest one, I guess it, it's top of mind for all of us. We really face so far increased competition, competition for top talent Emirati. I think in, in simple words, I guess all of us are fishing in the same pond. And so that is uh, that is a situation uh, which which we struggle on a daily basis. And I think you you guys with your um, uh, fair today, I think provide a super opportunity to to help us expand and bond a bit and and be more successful. I think the second challenge that comes to mind is I would I would label it as cultural integration. I think inclusion is obviously top of mind for us, uh, but. You know, like it's easier said than done. So I think we really need to highlight. Uh, we have created a culture calendar to to see what are the, the specific programs for or cultural events for Emirati that are relevant. We need to teach uh, uh, folks, line managers in Amakana, uh, what uh, what that means. And I think that that is a journey, uh, and right. it's, it's uh, top of mind for us to be addressing it. Uh, and I think the third challenge, uh, and maybe that is a bit more unique to us in our industry. Uh, is that uh, a, a good percentage of our skilled labor, which is part of the, the way ca the calculation is done, uh, that skilled labor sits in our restaurants. Uh, however, we have not been successful in attracting our fair share at this organizational level. So 
Uh, I really believe that at some moment probably more uh, will need to reconsider its expectation for the hospitality and food and beverage industry later this year to, to probably better align the supply and demand for that. So, um, yeah, I, I think we, we are very uh, delighted to sponsor uh, this event and, um, and we really hope uh, uh, the, uh, any Emirati listening to this will, will consider uh, joining us at some moment this year. Yep, yep. I'm, I'm certain uh, the voices are uh, going out and your message is going out loud and clear. Um, you have uh, built uh, an impressive um, premium branding on Jobs for Nationals already uh, and you know that is bound to attract uh, more applications coming through. So uh, Thomas and Peter, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to uh, you know engage with Joanne Guthrie who's been very patiently waiting. <laughs> Uh, Joanne, thank you so much for your patience. Uh, no problem. And, uh, and I'd like to begin with a similar set of questions to keep sure. the conversation unified. So could you please uh, introduce yourself uh, and, and, uh, and McDermott? Sure. So um, I'm Joanne Guthrie. I'm head of HR for McDermott's offshore business line. Um, McDoom, it's probably not as well known brand as some of the brands um, mentioned by the other speakers, but we are very well known in the oil and gas market and we are what's known as an EPCI company. We engineer, procure, construct and install. We work both onshore and offshore. Um, within the Middle East, although all of our business lines operate here to some degree, we are mainly focused on shallow water offshore development. So we work very closely with the large operators, Saudi Aramco, Qatar Energies, Adnoc, um, to develop their offshore fields. So what we do is very much focused on, to say, the, the design, the construct, the um, installation of offshore facilities like jackets, topside, floats in production, storage and offshore vessels. We also lay offshore pipelines and cables. So we have a large vessel fleet that work offshore. Um, within the Middle East, we have a headcount of about 10,000. Um, within UAE, we have have close to 7,000. The majority of those are based around our fabrication yard in Jebel Ali um, and where we have about 6,000 craft where most of our construction within the Middle East takes place. Um, and as you will probably see on my background, McDermott is celebrating 100 years this year. So yeah. a long history, 60 of those in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, we had a fabrication yard on Dubai Creek for many years before we moved to Jebel Ali. So it's an exciting year for us. Okay, great. Thanks for that uh, overview. So, um, what is the? Uh, by the way, before I jump into the next question, you mentioned jackets, and yes. you know I had to I had to look that up. And just for the people listening, those jackets are not the jacket that I'm wearing. No, no structures. So they are so yeah. yeah so i'm not an engineer so i'll put this in layman's terms i'm sure if you asked an engineer they'd have a very different answer but a jacket is effectively what the offshore structure sits on so you can get various designs but most of the ones that we have in our yard at the moment are four-legged structures and so it really is four legs that go down through and embed into the ocean floor and it is really the to say the um the base of any offshore structure and these can be huge if you happen to drive past mcdermott's yard in jebel ali anytime soon you will see some of the biggest jackets we've ever made so um yes they're not jackets that we wear we're not tailors <laughs> <laughs> so, so these jackets basically are where you know it's 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 basically the foundation where the absolutely rigs are erected on so they correct the rest on. correct oh, and it's not just rigs you know our people often think offshore you only have production rigs i mean you have energy de generation platforms you have storage platforms things so but whatever those are you're right the jacket is the the foundation of whatever sits on top of it and they are often embedded very deep into the ocean floor in order to you know make sure that the structure is secure okay great so um, my next question is, what is the headcount of the UAE business at the moment? Yeah, so it's close to 7,000. Um, you know, like many companies through COVID, we reduced headcount quite significantly and we're now on a sharp upward trend. Um, about 6,000 of those are craft within our Jebel Ali facility. 
Um, and, you know, they are highly skilled. You know, I get quite a rate when people refer to some of our craft as laborers because they're not, they're highly skilled welders, fabricators, scaffolders, um, you know, pipe engineers, things like that. So the majority of our headcount sits within our yard, but we have a close to 2000 professional staff that sit within Jebel Ali as well. Okay. And in terms of amortization, I mean, w w what is your uh, or McDermott's strategy for 2023? It's interesting listening to my co-panelists that actually some of the strategy and the challenges are quite, uni are quite similar, even though we're in very different um, sectors. Our strategy for this year is it's a journey um you know we were probably slightly behind the curve to be fair and so we are trying to play a bit of catch up um and so f last year and this year our strategy has been has kind of had, had several components firstly it's really understanding the market you know a lot of the skills that we um, recruit require engineering degrees that's highly technical so really trying to get an understand of what does that skill set look like in the market and how, how can we best tap into it? And things like today is a perfect example of us, not just trying to build a, a pipeline, but also just understand what's out there, not for now, but for future hiring as well. Um, it's about building a pipeline because our requirements are very much um, driven by what projects we win. And so we can go from needing one person to 500 people overnight based on one project win. And so it's really how do we build a future pipeline to make sure that as we win work, we can tap into the market effectively. And then thirdly, in terms of talent acquisition, it's about building internal capability. So we're looking at very much recruiting at what we call associate level. So that's entry level into our engineering job fair family and so looking at graduates and you know engineers with maybe two to three years experience and bringing them into the organization and really starting to build talent from the bottom up so that's really what our strategy for this year is focusing on um, any efforts made on the inclusivity and you know creating an inclusive work environment specifically for Emirati employees? Yeah, you know, I think my answer is very similar to what Americana Group is doing. You know, we're focusing on trying to build an inclusive culture for all our employees. We've got over 40 nationalities working in the UAE alone. <laughs> and so we need to make sure that every employee can be their authentic self when they come to work for McDermott. Um, we are this year in particular, we've run a lot of what we call DEI weeks, where our global DNI lead has gone into all of our offices globally and spent a lot of time talking about what is inclusion so that you know people have an actual understanding of what we mean by it. Um, right. We are also focusing very much on management development and how do managers manage in a diverse workforce. Um, you know, and and really, as I say, it's about giving everyone a voice. So very similar to what Americana Group is doing. We have ERG groups, our CEO is very involved with open forums where people can talk very openly. So it is a journey and our focus right now is making sure that everyone's got a voice in that journey so that they heard and we know how we can then build our culture around that. So as I say, nothing specific around Emiratis, but within that process, we want to make sure that they have a very strong voice so that we can adapt and see what we can do better. Um, and, and what steps has your organization taken to develop the skills of Emirati employees? Because I do speak to a lot of companies um, and there is a skills gap in the market. You know, absolutely. And particularly for us, to say we're an offshore contractor, it's a very specific skill set. So, um, you know, what what we have done this year, as I say, is very much recruit at an associate level. And for those roles, it's a lot of on the job training. So we focus in particularly on roles in our marine group and our fabrication group, which are two of our core areas. So, you know, graduates who join us are going to have opportunities to work offshore on offshore installation campaigns are going to have opportunities to work in our yard and really understand the core of our business so that then gives them opportunities across not just McDermott in the Middle East but across McDermott globally 
And then one of the things that we're focusing on and building for next year is we have a very successful graduate development program that has been within our Middle East operations for close to 30 years. And we're going to change some of the focus of that for next year to really focus on um, Emirati graduates. And that program's a two-year, very structured program. It's managed by our TNOD group. Um, There's three key rotations, six months each, where each graduate will go through our engineering, our fabrication and our marine groups. And then the last six months is a little bit more bespoke, where we work with the graduate to understand maybe what some of their interests are. And so those rotations can be through our commercial groups, supply chain, bids and proposals, HR. And so we're looking at building relationships with universities and some other organizations to really develop our inter- take for 2023 i mean sorry 2024 okay that's that's very interesting um so you know my last question is uh, what are the challenges uh, that you have encountered in implementing your amortization strategy um we've had a couple um you know you talk about skill gap there is a bit of that you know um as i say not every emirati wants to work in offshore contracting it's the hard edge of our of our sector and so it's not where everybody wants to be um but it is you know as a doing a little bit of marketing here you know if you want to be working on world-class engineering projects mcdermott's the place to be and so it's trying to get engineering graduates to understand what the industry is and what it can offer to them. We also find in compensation is a challenge. Um, you know, expectations of entry level or early career Emiratis are high. Um, you know, trying to find a balance of being attra- attractive and meeting those expectations, but also keeping parity and fairness within the organization is a challenge, which is another reason why we're looking at associate level recruitment. We feel we can be much more competitive at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, again, that's a little bit of a journey for us. But at the moment, I'd say those are our two biggest challenges. Okay, Joanne, uh, thank you very much for that insight. Just um, let us look around to see if there are any questions uh on the panel so um we have made some announcements and um hopefully um this recording um will be going live as well um it's being recorded on on youtube so um i want to thank you for your participation uh thank you for joining this discussion and uh you know let's uh, the, the the fair is live it is open and we'll be having more people and job seekers joining during the course of the day today and tomorrow Uh, and hopefully you'll be able to find some good recruits uh, as well for for both organizations absolutely and Dinesh just to finish you know as people are looking at this recording you know I really encourage them to go to our McDermott website our career page is there you know um, have a look at at our vacancies apply reach out to us on LinkedIn you know even if we don't have an opportunity right now we're very focused on building a future pipeline and creating networks within the Emirati community so you know please reach out to us we're very interested to talk to candidates all right Thank you very much, Thomas, Peter, Joanne. Thank you very much once again. Thanks, Dinesh. And thanks, Dinesh. Thank yeah, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.